<laughs> August 16th, 2020. Uh, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indetermined Links, episode number 565. And it's another one of those episodes, folks. It's one of these. Let's talk about sex. Gary, what specifically about sex are we talking about today? Glory holes, of course. Oh, <laughs> the ho- holes of glory? Yes. The holes at which you find the glory, hopefully, in your endeavors. It's glorious. Well, I think that's kind of, you know, how they got their name. I don't know. We haven't really done uh-huh. any history on that part. Yeah. yeah, I'm surprised you haven't found a definition of what a glory hole is in this episode. Well, I'm... wait for Give it. We'll find it soon. Oh, oh my god. god! I mean, Ooh, that's that's a website. Nope, we don't want that. Uh-oh. There's a practicality. <laughs> Careful with that Google search. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing I'm on my home computer, not my work computer. Although, <laughs> for this particular episode, I could probably be on my work computer. I mean, they would flag it that I'd be like, "Um, hello, I'm working HIV." Uh-huh. I need to know what the current the current status of glory holes are. <laughs> <laughs> so, holes of Urban Gloriana? Dictionary Gloriana. has a very very long definition. Oh boy, of a glory hole. Good God, is it long? So take a deep breath and try to uh, try to recite the whole thing. That's what he said. One, one no, 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 no. This is this is this is not going to be one that you can be doing one breath. This is literally three paragraphs. Oh my! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will provide the first part of this definition and then give the link so that everyone else can read it. Because no, ma'am. Um, a glory hole is a hole made in a thin wall or other type of partition where a man can insert their penis for sexual stimulation by an anonymous person on the other side. They can be found in bathrooms, in the stall wall, in private rooms found in adult bookstores, and in dark rooms and labyrinths in bathhouses. Open rooms and bathhouses with many glory holes are called a sectorium, and often have a raised level on one side of the holes to allow everyone to stand. Can we go back for a second? I have never heard of a sectorium before. Me either. <laughs> for the record, I'm like, a what, a what, a, a what, the what, what, what? I yeah. mean, it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. It, it, is, it is definitely a made-up word. I mean, I'm assuming if you search Urban Dictionary for your sectorium, it will probably show up, but it's also Urban Dictionary, which doesn't really count. Yeah. No. Don't worry, it has some accuracies on occasion. Yeah. Oral yeah. sex and head jobs are the most common types of glory hole sex, though, though anal sex is also common. Some bath- bathroom stalls and adult bookstore booths where three stalls or rooms are in a row have two glory holes on opposite sides of the center location certainly. to yeah. allow the person in the middle to alternate sucking the two men or to suck one while positioning themselves to be fucked by the other. Didn't we say earlier that we were just going to provide the link and then... Yeah. No, no, Damon said that. Uh, I just said that. Right, I was using the so royal my, we my... as in collectively all of us as hosts. That's why oh, I, I said, so no, David. Damon, Damon said that. Oh. <laughs> I was being very specific. Okay, well then Some I guess holes in public, my track, right? public are disguised, covered with a loose-fitting toilet paper holder or or plate. Some in-wall toilet paper holders can be allowed to allow a discreet hole between the two sides. Other public glory holes are more obvious, are frequently covered or blocked by people that don't approve. As glory hole locations can be hidden, often change, and may be located in more remote locations, it's best to consult a glory hole database website like holehunter.com beforehand to see where the nearest glory holes are and what type of activity they are. That's the end of the quote unquote definition. That's more of an encyclopedia article. 
Well, that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to read the whole thing, because it's not really a full-on definition. The first part is kind of a definition. The next part kind of adds on to it and provides more information, which could have been read by other people on their, at their own leisure. But, you know, whatever. Glory Hall is also petroleum production. <laughs> nope. 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 So... And, and besides the fact that Wikipedia article in, in regards to glory holes is uh, much longer. Yeah. It's also why I avoided it and went for the Urban Dictionary yeah. definition. Because you were looking for different dictionary definition. Yeah. So here's the next question. How safe are they in a pandemic? Good yeah. question. I think we've Maybe. read some articles about this. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I personally, I mean, it's somewhat safe for initial thought because we, we in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sense, because you don't. Right, so here's here's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Most, oh, I can't even say, oh, good, good gravy. Okay. There are different kinds of glory holes that are out there. The, op the size of the opening can be a factor. And mm -hmm. here's why I say that. I have personal friends who do not like the concept of the anonymous sex that a glory hole can provide if it is a small opening. Because you cannot see the individual on the other side. They are very particular mm -hmm. about who they're going to be screwing around with. So they want to be able to see them. So mm -hmm. they actually prefer a larger opening. You know, like the size of a very small window. One in which you can practically stick your whole head through. Mm -hmm. Or ass. Uh, well, yeah, depending on the like how the <laughs> hole was arranged. <laughs> I was thinking that they were more vertical than horizontal. Hence, I was like, oh. when you said ass, and I was like, wait, well, ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but the, I mean, they come in all different shapes and sizes. The reality. Well, like you're not a gymnast, Gary. What's that? Like spread? Like you're not a gymnast, Gary? You can't just spread the legs like, like split on a tree, like just. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, then you then you have to worry about like anal crevice. Is it the deep anal crevice? No, but I think that the the point of the glory hole is to get the uh, cock and maybe balls through through yeah and then everything else is done on the other side yeah well uh well trying to get the uh face or butt through is secondary or hand mm -hmm. or hand yeah or could be butt crack could be uh armpit could be knee fold i mean you know not yucking anybody's numb here anything is possible i guess uh, so part of the reason that I brought this up was because recently this came into the news as we've already discussed about COVID and sex earlier this year. Um, I don't recall if we actually talked about glory holes and I don't think we did, or at least not very much in depth because at the time the preferences were like, you do you boo and only you. <laughs> like mm -hmm. try not to be hooking up with anybody else because you just don't want to be doing that like spreading things and catching things and stuff Keep the and specific questions. right it's specifically about COVID-19 so but we are months and months and months into this now like mm -hmm. five months six months depending on your timeline um, and we have months to go before we get to a point where potentially we have a vaccine and mm -hmm. that could be you know proven effective through multiple studies and even then we have no knowledge if a vaccine would be lifelong or short term or long term and what that will mean so like just this month in august the cdc they did not make a big announcement but they updated their guidelines regarding infection and covid positive persons and I thought this was very interesting because 
we were getting asked questions about this and it hit the media on Friday evening so much so that I sent an email off off work to all my colleagues because I was like, great. So the media is like, what was it? I said, uh, a week and a half late to this because the CDC had made this update and said, if you are positive for COVID-19 or were positive for COVID-19, currently the CDC is saying that you have a three month window in which it is considered that you would not be infectious or possibly get reinfected. Mm. But that's as far as it goes. So it's about 90 day window. And the reason why is because we've had some individuals that have come up positive after three months out. And so they had to make a decision effectively on whether or not to count them as a previous positive and thereby possibly consider as a reinfection or are they a new positive all over again? And it's still a reinfection, but it's a different category. Anyways, mm. it's, it's a pain in the ass from an epidemiological standpoint. So we already had to deal with this internally in my county. Like, so that's how I was aware of this. And then the news is like, you know, you're only good for three months, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, you guys are just not <laughs> understanding how this works. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm distracted by Owen's oh, what? I really need to find Gary's main Twitter for my main account if we go to pass along that information. <laughs> so we'll get to that later, Owen. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's just one of these things where I'm kind of like, oh, okay, well, there's that. Um, the So now the thing is, it wasn't the CDC, it wasn't the FDA, but the New York State Department of Health put out recommendations regarding sex in the age of COVID. And this was about three weeks into July, so all not quite a month ago. Mm -hmm. But the reason why it made such a big splash is, and we have a link to the article from The Advocate, um, uh, new safer sex guidelines still maintain, quote, you are, you are your safest safe sex partner. Uh, make sure that you have consent. Uh, advise limiting contact if two is company, three or more is definitely a crowd, and as a result, therefore not safe. Um, pick larger, more open and well-ventilated spaces, <laughs> which kind of sounds like an endorsement for outdoor sex. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, wear... <I've> spaces. <laughs> wear a mask and avoid kissing or touching your face and bring an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Do not confuse that for your lube, children. Unless you're, into the, unless you're into that tingle, then mm. so be it. Um, so you go on and go on, and then you get to the part where, you know, also you should consider wearing a face covering or a mask that covers your nose or mouth as heavy breathing and panting could spread things. Mm -hmm. They also explicitly advise making things cakey by getting, quote, creative with sexual positions and physical barriers, comma, like walls, end quote. So people started losing their ever living minds because it appears the New York Department of Health is endorsing glory holes. Now, this isn't a competition, so I'm not going to say that ought to be outdone, although it feels that way. The British Columbia Center for Disease Control in Canada, on the other hand, um, actually put in their stipulation, use barriers, comma, like walls, parenthesis, E dot G, glory holes and parenthesis, <laughs> that yeah. allow for sexual contact but prevent close face-to-face -face contact. Mm -hmm. So basically, pre uh, specifically said glory holes. Well, they used it as an example. Yeah, Because I'm sure just reading call. like walls, some people may have been like, I don't understand what you're talking about. You know? But there's that one, I think one of the articles you linked um, there's a picture of a guy that had like, I mean, I know it was probably not really for this, but like, you see like, obviously like a sledgehammered um, like hole in the, in the person's drywall. Like, not that kind of hole. Right. Yeah. So we also have an article to uh, complex.com, uh, which is a Canadian online publication about this as well um, from their perspective and how Canada's Twitter response was quite amusing actually um, 
One of them says it's not even 9 a.m. and Canadians are having a laughing fit so hard that hashtag glory hole is now trending. But seriously, it is good advice. <laughs> like, they're having such a good, you know, yeah, a I mean, good it's, it's uh, true. abusement of it. Just not something you normally would see in those type of publications. Right. Yeah. Now, there is another article. I didn't put the link in, but it says New York City's Department of Health appears to endorse glory holes to fight coronavirus. And what cracks me up about this is that the person who wrote this, uh, this article, Brian Menengus, says, to be absolutely sure this wasn't a failure of imagination on my part, I did my due diligence and reached out to the city health department for clarification. When asked if the above passage was a tacit endorsement of glory holes, Dr. Dimitri Deskalakis Deputy Commissioner of Disease Control and Incident Command for the Health Department's COVID-19 response told Gizmodo, we trust our audience of New Yorkers are creative enough to know what this means. End quote. Mm. I'm so amused by this. Because <laughs> public health officials are turning themselves into fucked up shaped pretzels, like all twisted up because they just won't outright say it. Like they're just so, you know, yeah. there, there's really nothing wrong with saying yes to glory holes right true well i mean for some people maybe not always you know um I, uh, in my youth <laughs> oh here we go okay is this how yeah, we're clear or we're qualifying this to... well we're all almost over 40 um, I I mean I guess even so now even still like there's a I I like the an anonymity of kind of like the glory hole concept you know either side whether you're giving or receiving like you're you're there's an enjoyment factor to that like there's some like sponta spontaneity fun risqueness of it you know um but i will admit like i've not like encountered a glory hole meaning like in like a regular space i've been in i've been to bathhouses where i've seen i've been to adult, adult bookstores and 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 such where they are you know probably more prevalent i've not been at like the macy's bathroom and been like oh there's a glory hole there um, like I've not seen that. I've not been at the rest stop, you know, traveling and happened upon one. Really? No. You've never I seen haven't. a glory hole in the wild. No. Oh. I can't remember if I have. <laughs> so I'm not gonna I say I have or haven't. So I saw them before I knew what they were. Ah. What I did know was that you could see through them and that you could see another guy's dingling. And I mm. found that very interesting. <laughs> Gary de Voyeur. Is he nice? Oh, I've always <laughs> been a voyeur. Like, I figured yeah. that out at a very early young age. Mm -hmm. And I've said that many times. That's what kind of, you know, bothers people. Because they're like, you know, I'm like, I'm all about watching. I don't have yeah. a problem with that. You don't have to, you don't have to necessarily be involved. You can just like, you know, continue. Well, I mean, the, the, okay, so if I'm <laughs> in the physical space, and there's maybe an opportunity, that's a little different. But, like, remote, like, this, that's part of this whole thing with COVID-19. It's like, oh, I can watch other people remotely? I'm cool with that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be there live, you know, or virtually and having the sensation of being with the other individual or individuals. Like, mm -hmm. I'm okay with, like, the fantasy of remote watching like so and i've always enjoyed videos that are hidden cam mm -hmm. concepts um whether they are staged or not staged is yeah. more legally preferable yeah. um but you know yeah i mean so, that's yeah. fair and like i said i like i i've i'm thinking back through my life and i don't think i've ever encountered one in a while like ever 
I, I I must have. I just can't think of the time that it's happened. Like yeah, where like, been I would anything. I've seen, I've seen quite a number yeah. apparently. <laughs> so yeah. Well, when you look for it, of course you're going to see it more often. Well, I don't know if that's actually. A I mean, that's not an inaccurate statement as a generality. <laughs> However, I am not See? seeking them out. You're, not You're inferring them out. I kind of it's like a, it's it's probably more of one of those things where it's like you go to a place and and you just kind of look around and say, oh, I wonder if there's a glory hole here. Not necessarily to use, but just if there's one what exists in the location. Yeah, it's a like, thing that comes up on my mind on your mind. Well, and, and to be fair, like, yeah. Meanwhile, some of us are just like, I just need to take, take it up. Like, I I have in the past, like, actively looked for one, for them. Like, like, that's why I'm, like, surprised I've not actually seen one. Or maybe I've seen them as they, like, when they've been covered up. Like, I have seen that. Like, I've seen the ones where they've, like, mm -hmm. like, it's, like, at the rest stop and they've put, like, them metal like you know plate covering plate. over like plate over the glory hole that had been there i have seen that so i technically i guess have seen one or two but i've not actually seen it but i you know i will admit like um you know we've you know gone on trips and whatever and i've gone to a rest stop i will see if there's one like why not? <laughs> well, and, and there are so few and far between now in, in uh -huh. spaces. I mean, if I had a time machine with the ability to go back to the 70s mm -hmm. and the prevalence of like hookup culture and glory holes, I probably, yeah, would find that like very <laughs> exciting because. They they made it into the 80s and sort of to the 90s, but I want to say the latter half of the 90s and then into the new millennium. I think they kind of like all disappeared. Well, not all, yeah. but like vast majority yeah. of them, especially like yeah. in public restrooms and stuff like that. Like they mm -hmm. just, I don't know how you want to phrase it, like you know, morality or whatever uh, stepped in. You know, so mm -hmm. a lot of that kind of stuff was was yeah. diminished. But perhaps it's also, you know, a part of the culture just in general, you know, that maybe apps and internet, you know, replace the ability to have hookups. I don't True. know. But, I mean, well, I mean, that's actually, I don't know if well, that's I, necessary. I, I think know. part of it is that, that with the internet culture, uh, culture is now instead of, like, going to a place for a glory hole, some people are creating in-home glory holes. Also true. And, and then using the hookup apps to invite people over to their glory hole. I've seen that many a times, actually. There's, I mean, there are people... Which kind of segues that... into one of our one of our articles. <laughs> or, or links. I should say. Because it's, it's not really an article, because I think it was a like, Twitter link. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, yeah. So, part of the reason that I brought this up was... There used to be a, um, a Twitter handle with a Facebook group with a whole series of websites kind of creating this glory hole network. Mm -hmm. However, I discovered last night when, in preparing for this show that all of that has pretty much been taken down. Uh, mm -hmm. The Twitter account exists but doesn't pull up anything. The Facebook account has been closed by facebook for violation of its policies um mm -hmm. the person who owns all the variable websites are putting the urls up for day up for sale um they had a series of books they were going to release they had a podcast i was just really fascinated that, like this person was very pro glory hole in terms of like you know its existence and what it means how oh. it you know provide something to the community so to speak like and all of that is pretty much uh gone by the wayside mm -hmm. um and, the, and it, there's a whole if you were to find it there's this whole thing about how they have had repeated troubles a time and again with getting a merchant processing company 
because I think at one time they had been with PayPal and they got shut down because it's in violation of their terms and conditions. And then they went with, I think, Square and they got shut down. Or maybe they didn't even try with Square. They were with Stripe recently and they got shut down. And basically this person, who I'm presuming is a male, um, said, I'm just throwing my hands up in the air. Like, I cannot win at this. Like, I am being blocked over and over and over again because of the content um, issue, which I've thought about for a long time, like probably for a decade now. I've kind of wondered about how does adult content navigate in the internet, especially when financial transactions are involved, because Mm -hmm. like, where do you find a good payment processor and or a bank that does not consider that in violation of their terms and conditions Mm -hmm. and be able to exist, you know, whether it be hosting a porn site or like only fans or just for fans or, um, you know, just things along those lines, like how does that content exist, you know, without um, having issues, you know, where, you know, their, their stuff is either shut down or they just can't financially operate. So, that being the case, I kind of scrambled because I was like, oh, my whole thing was to point to this website and the stuff that they had listed. And they had some really interesting guidelines about mm. glory holes in the time of COVID and all this kind of stuff. And now it's all gone. Wow. I'm just looking at this um, Google Doc that he had posted on his um, Twitter page. I don't know if you saw that. But um, was it posted? No, it was... So when you click the link on his um, Twitter page mm-hmm. for the glory hole dot today, it now opens to a um, Google Doc, um, which is essentially a, I'm trying to figure out how many pages this is. Uh, how many pages is this? Like a six page document essentially describing everything that's been going on. Right. Wow. Yeah, this is what I was referencing. We could actually probably put a link to this in the article. So I was really bummed out because this just happened, like, what, in the past week? Um, Mm. Part of this document says the censorship battle payment provider problem. And and in the paragraph, it says, on August 11, 2020, I received out of the blue a notice from Stripe that the sexual nature of my work is against the terms and canceled their service agreement with me. I am no longer able to accept and process funds. This is the final end. I've had a long search for payment processors, and it goes on and on. Um, you know, and, and the directory they had been creating was being labeled as sex trafficking. Like it, it's, it's yeah, unfortunate. Honestly, it's a big pain in the ass. Yeah, um, the person like- took on this identity, which I think is amazing. First name, <laughs> Glorenthal. Last name, Holyfield. <laughs> That is a name. Creative. That is a name. So, but the document says why the hashtag Glory Hole movement and Glory Hole podcast came to a painful end once again. Um, So it is. It's really disappointing because I was really, like, wanting to make some references and stuff to it. Um, But, yeah, it talks a lot about, like, some of the stuff that it's been dealing with and the whole series of websites that it has for URLs for available and stuff. So that being said... Um, there is a person on Twitter that I've been following for quite a while, at Richland Glory. Mm-hmm. And this is the gentleman I alluded to previously, I'm pretty sure, in the podcast about um, the fact that he has like a reservation system set up to set up appointments, um, so on and so forth. And what I've put in, the, in our show notes is a link to his Twitter post in which, by the way, not safe for work image. Just yeah, so you totally not for safe work. Yeah, I mean it's a gorgeous image, but it's not safe for work. Um, but on the left side, he wrote a whole bunch of text, and he and I'll read it to you. It says, "On the main metrics I use to decide if the glory hole can be open is a downward trend in COVID nineteen cases in our area. Lately, unfortunately, the number of people testing positive in our area has skyrocketed, and over ten percent of all tests come back positive in Washington. He's located in Washington, the state." within the Mm -hmm. contiguous 48 of US. Um, Since many are asymptomatic and testing isn't even being done widely as possible, this is of grave concern. For this reason, for the safety of us both, I will be canceling all appointments and suspending scheduling at the glory hole until cases are coming down again. I'm very sorry, but to maintain 
To maintain access to this fun and rare experience, we both have to weather the storm successfully, so please wear a mask and distance from people outside your household. Thanks for understanding. Keep checking back at to see when scheduled, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Now, this was back on Jan July 17th, just as a historical like reference thing. Because yeah, since go. then, I'm pretty sure he's gone back to being open based yes. on some recent posts. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, I've been following Richland Glory for a while, both on um, uh, Twitter and um, X2, because he is quite talented, by the way. Um, and Daddy, so yeah. we Yeah. Button, button. Cot pig. Yeah. yeah. His but, pig. Like, yeah, not so much button. But you know what I mean. Like, like, no, I know. There, like he's yeah, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of like things going for him, and yeah. he does his job really well. And well, not his job. I don't know what he if this is a full time job or not. But he whatever. gets paid in cummies. That's what he gets paid. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's 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 I I understand it, and it's kind of one of the things that we you know to this point of this, you know, podcast and talking about, like, that is something that you have to consider. Um, mm -hmm. While glory holes are quote unquote safer, while the CDC is saying that, you know, having these barriers are safer, they're not 100% guaranteed that you will not, you know, get anything, you know. Um, reality is if you're getting sucked, like you're someone's saliva is being put on your dick. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> so. And there and there hasn't been an affirmative, like, uh, statement, mm -hmm. one direction or another about bodily fluids. Also like that, like mm -hmm. that. That's one of the the gray areas. Like, technically, part of COVID nineteen, and the reason I say part of, is COVID nineteen as the virus has been found in feces as a matter. That's why rimming mm -hmm. should really kind of not be a thing right now. Yeah. Um, what, it hasn't been proven as a transmission like method. Like, so like there's been a bunch of articles. I don't have the information because it's not quite my wheelhouse, but I know at work there's been some articles and postings about maternity, like with mothers with breastfeeding. So there's this stuff, you know, that's that we're, you know, it's a novel virus, kids. Like it's new to us. So we're trying to figure our way around things. So when it comes to sucking dick mm -hmm. or getting fucked, like you should know the other person mm -hmm. to some degree. Like you could still be yeah. anonymous, like you didn't need to know all their business. But as I was saying, I think last night that, you know, we're kind of going back in a way to um, what we learned as the community that you have to have, like you need to be consciously having discussions with your partners about their testing, like their results, their like, you know, do mm -hmm. you know, and have you been around and, you yeah. know, that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. in it's... some sense, it's, it's very much like STDs in general that we've had. Right. It, it's a different type of virus, so it's not specifically S an STD, but mm -hmm. because of sexual acts, it can be one yeah. vector of, of acquiring it so yeah. so we if, if we treat it along with our regular stuff in regards to stds uh, obviously you can't just go go as hey i'm on prep and everything's a-okay i mean you can yeah. really in the first place because perhaps they're really kind of only covering so many so much things one thing <laughs> but, um <laughs> but in any case it's very much, uh, uh, you know, just making yeah. sure that their history, what their current situations, have you been around anybody exactly. after test positive because of 19, blah, 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 blah. And then you're, if everything shows up clear, maybe you're okay. It could just be no one has tested positive yet, but they're right. a carrier or something like that. Yeah. But that's yeah. that's it's, true with any, any of the diseases that we would normally be considering in any of this case. Yeah. It, well... And I think that's one of the complications is that people aren't aware of what measurements you should take in. Like, mm -hmm. let's say that like someone's interested and they want to hook up with you. Like, what are the questions you should ask? How do you 
approach this kind of thing. Um, you know, so like other stuff, it's like, you know, one basic question is, have you ever been tested? Mm -hmm. And if so, what were the results? When was it? When were those results? And the big thing is, if you've come up negative on a, specifically, I'm going to talk about COVID-19. If you've come up negative on a COVID-19 test, be aware that anybody who has a negative result, that is only indicative of the moment you got tested. That's yeah. all it means. A negative COVID-19 test for uh, what we call the PCR, the basic test, is not an immunization test. It does not say that you are immune from the, from the virus. It yeah. just means you don't have it at the moment you got tested. That's it. So if you've had, now if yeah, you have contracted COVID, then that's a different landscape because the CDC basically feels that you have a 10 day window in which you could be infectious where you're having what we call viral shed. Um, and what we're looking for is a reduction in symptoms. Like have you gone at least 24 hours without a fever and whatever your symptom, symptoms were, have they reduced? That was recently changed in the past month. It used to be 72 hours. Now it's 24 hours. It's one day, like, which of course, you know, all this stuff, you know, as it develops can be very confusing for people. Yeah. And like I talked about um, in pre-show, I think about like the whole reinfection thing, you know, it's a whole other circumstance in the 90 day yeah. thing. So it's it, it, whether it's really about, are you educated? Is the other person educated? And then can you make that decision? Um, it's all unknown. I mean, not all I know, but, you know, several things are unknown. And, like, we don't know if, like you were just saying earlier, we don't know that you could get it from the saliva of another person. You know, I mean, like, not kissing. I'm talking, like, on a dick. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. Like, right. we don't necessarily know for sure that that is or is not a, a, a transmitter. Um... But it could be, right? It, there's a possibility. It's a possibility. So, right. That's take, <laughs> yeah, take your own, you know, at your own risk. The, as it were. So far, like, I, I think of it this way. Remember when, like, COVID-19 became, like, the, like, became the news and we were learning about it? There was this whole phase where we were really concerned about contact surfaces. Mm-hmm. And, like, we were hyper-vigilant about cleaning everything. Mm -hmm. And I've seen how that's changed, and it's not really the case anymore. And I don't want to say that we've moved completely away from it. But, like, I don't see shopping carts being hosed down 24-7. Yeah, on the regular, yeah. They're being cleaned, but I think we've been learning, like, yes, con common contact surfaces can be... A potential spread but it's more about like if you if you touch it with your hands are you then touching your hands to your face like are you introducing it through your nose or your mouth like somehow in that vicinity that's more yeah. of a factor and because i think mask wearing has become standard or mm -hmm. very common especially because we all pretty much deal with businesses and they're required there in most cases um, like, that's the other thing I pay attention to is like, now we don't probably, nobody probably thinks twice about wearing a mask, but mm. whew, the first couple months, that was rough. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, to me, it's kind of like sex and condoms, you know, like people just that, you know, they don't like change and they don't like, you know, the stuff and I get it. I understand, you know, I mean, I still see it on a daily basis where people are, you know, not wearing their mask correctly. It's under the chin, like if their nose is exposed or whatever. And I'm kind of like, y'all, like, just, mm -hmm. just, yeah. Yeah, really I will, effective. it was. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Yeah. Mm. And if you're gonna make rules, follow the rules. I will, I just, I'm gonna kind of segue just a little bit here because I went to dinner last night with my brother and sister-in-law and Jim and we went to Outback Steakhouse and their whole thing was like, you know, you must wear a mask and it was put on the door. You must wear a mask in order to get in, which is true for like the county, like Hamilton County right now is under a mandate where everyone has to wear a mask, like in public spaces. Yes, once you get seated, you can take off the mask, but like, that's the whole idea. They also had areas cordoned off, like at the bar, they said, you know, no seating 
um, due to you know due to coronavirus. And we had dinner, and at one point um, they let someone in, like a couple in, that didn't have mask on, and literally gave them napkins, like the they were cloth napkins to put over their faces to have them sit down. And then they obviously, I don't know what they did with those napkins, but like. And towards the end of the evening, um, as we were leaving, they had like several people got went to the bar and got drinks and sat and stood there for a little bit. There was one couple that was standing right behind us because we were sitting in the bar area that was sitting right standing right behind us at the bar. No mask, no nothing, having a drink, like getting their drinks and all that stuff. And I was so, so mad. <sighs> Because it's just like, if you're going to make rules, follow them. If you're going to make exceptions, then then why bother? Like, just well, everybody. and I think this kind of gets into the complication. It's not really meant to be complicated, but the complication of approaching somebody and calling them out on it. Like, people don't like confrontation. They don't want to be confrontational, and they don't want to be like the star of a Karen video. That's mm -hmm. a horrible like reference pop culture example. But you know what I mean? Like they don't really want yeah. to get into it with somebody. I've thought about it several times and I've realized that actually if I wanted to, I have the right to do it. I have a title and a job that can be effective and if necessary might very well escalate the situation and or shut it down. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of a Dilbert cartoon that I have here in my office that I love. It's somewhere over there. Um, the last panel says, it's best not to stir a pot of crazy. And I've always liked it because the reality is, if someone is... I'm going to try to be as polite as I can, not in their right mind. You may not want to like get involved in that, so it yeah. kind of becomes a little bit of a you know, do you or don't you say anything? Um, because the reality is, if you have a condition in which wearing a mask makes it difficult for you to breathe clinically, you should probably not be out in public. Period, mm -hmm. because your medical condition is already at risk by being around other people. Mm -hmm. So. That is actually my biggest, like, thing. Like, if you've got a condition that says you can't wear a mask, then maybe you shouldn't be out. Right. During a pandemic where we don't know <laughs> how you can, you know, fully catch it, you know. And there's no cure. Our vaccine. Our, right. you know. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Just <laughs> So, let's talk about can Sex. you actually hook up at a glory hole and be safe in COVID-19? Mm -hmm. um, eh. I say you can. Sure. But there's a lot of there's a lot of things. There's a lot of ifs. No, there's just a lot of things that kind of have to be addressed ahead of time. So let me put it this way. Well, sucking dick is a lot of work sometimes, you know? So <laughs> But I don't want it to be a lot of work. Well, no, that's because you're a lazy top. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm a lazy first. So, okay. New, new title. Um, this is 2020, y'all. I've already here's... stated in the past that I've been, I've been wanting more bottoming practice, okay? <laughs> but you can't get it because of COVID. There we go. <laughs> even, even more reason. There's other yeah. reasons, but we won't so, do that. Here's, here's kind of the way I look at it. If you are wanting to have fun and do a hookup with a glory hole, whether it be your own or somebody else's, there are some things you should probably take into consideration. Mm -hmm. The cleanliness of the physical space, the sanitization practices, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, the cleanliness of the participants, their health status, yeah. um, you know, what is there? You don't need to know their whole damn medical record. There is such a thing called HIPAA, and you don't need to be getting into that business. But you should have some idea of, you know, kind of what their situation is and what yours is. Um, you know, and 
then a mutual understanding and agreement between the parties about, you know, what is going to be involved in some ways. And that kind of goes against Glory Hole's assert perspective, especially when you're thinking from the anonymous side. Because, mm -hmm. like, the idea of a Glory Hole anonymously as a hookup is someone puts their dick through a hole <laughs> and the other person pleasures to the point of mm -hmm. an orgasm. You don't trade names. You don't trade numbers. You don't know who the other person is. Like, that's the concept of the anonymous. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I have a need. I need to bust a nut. Thank you for the assist. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. You know, the, <laughs> the, you know, the hand, you know, the handy, the, you know, whatever, bro job. I mean, there's so many different references, but the reality is, is, you know, that's kind of the essence of it so i think it's possible um the fact that you know the canadian cdc outright said it the new york department of health kind of said it you know like the reality is that you know glory holes have been around for a very long time mm -hmm. and i don't see them going away in fact i kind of agree sort of not quite with an article pre-show i was reading a lot about how like you know they're having a resurgence i'm like well I don't know if I'd say a resurgence, but I will say this, and this gets to our like kind of our last link. Um, so there's this account that I ended up finding on Twitter called at Garage Glory Hole. Mm -hmm. And it is a couple. And actually, I gotta see where they're at. Um, I don't know if they list their actual location. Not their street address, but like what state they're in. State or oh, city. They're in Michigan. Hey Drew. Mm -hmm. Hope you're listening to the show. Um, <laughs> so they just built a custom glory hole setup in their garage. And when I say yeah. they built, I mean they built. They went to the local hardware lumber yard type it place. A it was a legit project. And I, in my opinion, it is damned impressive and very well done. Mm-hmm. It was blueprinted, I think. I don't know for certain, but it like has a lot of features and considerations, ideas. Like, I I'm I'm highly impressed. And they have pinned at the top of their tweet the video walkthrough of their garage glory hole and the setup. And because it's a couple and both of them like sucking dick, there are two glory holes side by side. So if another couple or buddies wanted to be there at the same time, that is a, a possibility. Yeah, I, I and I and I'm looking as I'm looking at their, you know, I've seen this before. I actually followed them on Twitter. They have like stand like a like um, hand sanitizer station and mask and all that stuff like available for people to use. It looks like they've got uh, paper towels and. Um, oh, good lord, that like paper towels and um, hand towels, and I'm pretty sure, yep, I think so. They've got a lot of things, there. they even got a little like a fucking TV in there. Like, that's that's impressive. It's like they made their own mini adult uh back room porn store, like, yeah, setup. Um, there's bottled water, there's lube, there's a little bowl with something in it, and I can't tell what it is. It annoys the shit out of me. I've watched this video several times, and I can't figure out what the little things are towards the end, or what the pen-looking things are, but, like, they've thought it through. Oh, like they've Well, the, the pens are probably, like, Sharpies, because there's all that stuff written on the walls. Like, oh, I guess that's to, true. That's maybe true. to give, like, a score, like, our, our something, provide some information, who knows? What. <laughs> like, 10-10, ten, ten, like... Tens across right. the board. <laughs> right. And like Owen said in the live chat, reminds me of a bathhouse I used to work at. Exactly. Like the first moment I saw this, I was like, this is like the legit thing as in, you know, they literally replicated what you've seen in bathhouses or in mm -hmm. back, back rooms of bars and, yeah. uh, you know, bookstores, that it's, kind of jazz. It's a, it's a setup. It and is. I, there was a I'm lot of thought. Like in production into this so and, like I'm, I'm really impressed because i'm like looking at the very like the 
start of the video, like it actually has like like the door is is painted with the same color as the trim that is on the house. So like it just looks like a door. Like well, it is a door. On, I, you know what I mean? But I, what I mean is like if you are passing by this house, it looks like they put in a door. Well, so like, like, actually, you know. I think that's their regular door. So what I think it is, is that they have a regular door entrance to the left of their big garage door. Mm-hmm. And they just got smart and said, we'll just you we'll just put the glory hole room there. So mm-hmm. instead of opening the big garage door, you just walk in the normal like yeah. pedestrian entrance. Yeah, Only when a... you walk in, you're now instead walking of... into a... Right. Instead of walking into the garage, you are walking into the glory hole room they have set up on the other side of the door. I thought it was incredibly smart because I'm like, these fuckers, if they sell this house or like if they have to, <laughs> they can easily dismantle this thing. Like, I mean, true. Like, I'm, I'm wondering if either of these guys have like architecture or theatrical production background or something yeah, that they've thought possible. through like this There's kind of lighting. Thing. I can definitely see theater. Uh, stuff. It, they also have like uh, uh, handhold chains. Yes. <laughs> there are chains. That, so there are metal chain links hanging from the ceiling with support beam structure and mirrors. There are like actual handles and they've put in grab bars like you would use for assistance in your bathroom mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, for the shower or the toilet or whatever. Like giving you lots of surfaces of things to hold on to. Oh. And then there's a hidden door. I say hidden. The whole thing's painted black. And on the right of the main wall, there's a door that opens straight into the garage itself, which I guess means, like, not only is it easy enough access from the inside garage. the home, mm-hmm. but, like, you know, if things yeah. go really well with whoever's there and you don't yeah, want to no. keep it to just the glory hole room, you can leave. I mean, like, there's... Lots I'm lots just really lots in, like I'm history. really 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 happy with how they did this. Like the it, lighting, there's there's there's. Uh, this ain't no. This, this ain't no. I bought a, a shower curtain at the Dollar General, kids. Yes. And hug it like across a door frame and cut a hole in it. No 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 no. Yes. <laughs> That's that's not what this is. No, 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 ma'am. That this, is that is not. This is this the is. true in-home glory hole. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this, this is, is like uh, self-home re- renovation sort mm-hmm. of level thing. Although I would, I would, <laughs> oh I still, God. I still consider consider the way they built it and such. It really does remind me of like a flat from uh, uh, from theater. It probably is. There's yeah. probably some. So it's There's it's some... it's very much along that line, uh, yeah. but uh, still, it's it. This is this was a project. Yeah. So this, this was they're serious about their glory hole. Yes, I mean, to me, the 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 thought and detail is. Like they they definitely were like this is what we want to do we enjoy doing this so we're gonna build this and ta da here we go like I think even in it it says if we if build, you build if it you they will come. come see you um, yeah yeah cute I like that and it's it's impressive like I I I am impressed mm-hmm. I I could I'm, it gives it, it gives the right mood for, for yeah the, for what's happening in there. Uh, uh, it is hidden, so mm-hmm. if if you just an onlooker was was just like walking by or someone was driving by and somebody goes in the door, it just looks like they're just doing the access from access to the house through this door that's next and to the garage. That, that's it. The only thing I want to know, and it's the one thing I'm kind of like going to have to look through this video a couple of times to kind of figure out, is if you open the door can you if okay i trying to remember if the door opens inward i think the door opens inward door opens yes. inward okay so i'm wondering if they open that other door that's in there like if they open that 
like it could be potentially completely hidden from the outside. Like if they open that first door, that first door, and then open that second door, then like all you have to, all you see is like the wood, um, the particle board. Yeah. So you wouldn't see what it is. So like if they actually use the door for like, oh, I want to like get stuff into the garage, like you know, yeah. groceries or whatever, you know, whatever. I see what you mean. I kind of yeah. wondered about that when I first saw the video. I was like, oh, I wonder how much of the garage this takes up. But it's honestly not much wider than the initial door frame. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't even think it crosses into the, the garage door, which is right next mm. to it. Yeah. I mean, if you open up the garage, you would see it seriously see like some sort of booth thing there yeah but that's if you open the garage door yeah and and based off of when they were coming from inside the the glory hope booth into the garage uh through the hidden door um it didn't look like they really used it to park <laughs> they probably don't i mean are they were they may do it they may have been building, like, building the glory hole room, and they were, like, building it all in the garage, so they, you know, put the cars out in the street or whatever, and then, because, um... Yeah, they just may not use yeah. the garage to park cars. Yeah, or they, they may not use it at all that way, or they may not use it, they may not have used it while they built this thing, yeah. which I, is possible. Yeah, like, so, <laughs> the garage is full of, like, tools and stuff mm -hmm. like in some wood so yeah from the looks of it Go ahead. it's not a thing that they would have like i'm rewatching. <laughs> it's not any wider than into the garage door from the looks of it yeah the big like door. the 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 bottom so as i'm looking at it like i just paused it right before it ended so the side of the garage door. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, <there's> like... <laughs> so, so the side of the garage door, right, right as it ends, it's right next like to it is wood the foot. wood, like the wood panel, the wood that is, um, like the one of the frames for the part of the garage that are part of the glory hole room that is in the garage and yeah it's part of the frame yeah and i'm as i'm and it's about as long about as wide if you go to the very beginning mm -hmm. where between the door and the garage door right interesting huh <laughs> i'm gonna put this uh link to the tweet in the chat uh, just this is people can, this, can, uh, this is very a, a peak. This is very we are praising God. somebody in their glory hole, uh, their home glory hole uh, 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 project. Yeah, and it think I think because it, I mean, if they, you know, especially because it looks like we said it looks like they're a couple, so it's they've kind of made this decision. And I mean, I've seen their videos like of them actually using the the new glory hole space. So they've obviously been open for business, as it were. But um, so I think it's just interesting the precautions that they're also trying to take as well. You know, um, if you've been kind of following them, it doesn't seem like they are open to everyone. It looks like it's been several repeat per repeat customers. <laughs> As it were, um, so I'm, I'm I'm interested. I'm I'm curious how they're doing. Um, well, and that's part of the thing I think that that these two different individuals with the Twitter accounts online. I think what they're representing is that you can be safe and operate your own personal glory hole, but you have to be pragmatic. Like you have to think things through about your safety versus their safety. Um, and, and what all is involved in that. 
One of them is, is doing precautionary measures and but there's scheduling and the other is doing an in-home renovation yeah. project. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's because I, I was reading in the, the live chat, like Dinden's comments about um, um, like all the people. I mean, I don't know if they're doing kind of what like Richland Glory was doing, which is kind of like scheduling it and, and, and everything it's possible that it looks like, you know, every once in a while, someone, I don't even know if they even pull up to the driveway. They may park on the street. I don't know. But, you know, you just walk in and do it. And if you don't have, like you said, nosy neighbors or someone that's really paying attention, depending no, on how good they are, they might stop before they know it. Yeah. Um, My friend came over. We hung out. It, yeah. It's, Happened to be that the hanging out and fault me sucking their dick, but still. You don't need to know that, Beaver. Well, I mean, what's the difference between, right, but I mean, let's be honest. What's the difference between, like, them standing there and putting their dick through a hole in the wall versus them sitting in your living room and you sucking their dick while they're playing something on your PS4? True. (laughs) True. One has a barrier, one doesn't. Pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, so I think it's mostly about whether or not you, you know, how you set things up and and yeah. that kind of stuff. Is it, it's a... having that, that big old barrier and just, like, the only uh, 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 contact is through that hole is a thing for you or not? Up to you. Yeah, and, I, and some people don't like it. You and that's it. fair. Like yeah. me, I don't like it. I like more contact. Yeah. I mean... I don't like the restriction, uh, but that's just me. You I like prefer... glory holes, go for it. I'm, I'm not opposed to glory holes. It's just not my thing. I prefer more contact, but sometimes you just want to... Just want a blowjob? Just want a blowjob or you just want to blow somebody and you don't need to care who they are. Like... Not so much now. I'm going to put that, like, preface that with, like, now. Like, mm-hmm. now, definitely, like, take the precautions, for sure. I mean, in general, you should, but, like, you know, definitely think about who you're and what you're doing. But and just remember, we're all in this together. I mean, we may yeah. be apart, or we're, we're together apart, I think some things have, have said. So, it's... yeah. It's it's not just you. It's a lot of people, uh, and, and there's plenty of places where you can commiserate, such as Twitter, uh, Facebook, whatever. Um, you know, you can have your your private groups on or message groups on, on Facebook. Facebook, even hookup apps. You can just be be more using it as a chat sort of thing, and and right. maybe have mm-hmm. virtual sex that way. So, but in the end, we're all in this together. So, uh, uh, social distance mask. Uh, this is gives a whole this time uh, time and age is is very much gives a new meaning to mask for mask. And uh, uh, yeah, and we'll give you we'll be giving you more coverage right here on the Cubs Out Loud Network. <laughs> but, so I will say this: I think. Uh, wrap it up it's it's quite possible yes i think it's quite possible to do it i think you just need to like take precautions and be aware of what those things are Mm -hmm. if you have ideas or thoughts about glory holes safety precautions activities perhaps you have stories personal anecdotes experiences you can let us know Mm -hmm. there's plenty of ways to do that too Mm -hmm. wow what a segue uh you can pop over to our website Leave a comment or a blog. You could shoot us an email, which is comes out loud at gmail.com. Uh, you could tell us about it vocally by giving us the jingle jingle at uh, 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can check out our, our us on our social media outlets over on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. All at Cubs Out Loud uh, in the, where, the appropriate place of the URL. Uh, you could chat about it over on tinyurl.com slash telegram-col. 
Uh, if you would like to see when we are planning and recording these shows, you can subscribe to our Google Calendar over at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, if you would like merchandise, um, maybe we should think about something that's kind of like thematic for this. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, but we got plenty of stuff over at uh, Zazzle slash comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL for your country of choice. Or your local country, I should say. So Zazzle.com, Zazzle.co.uk, etc. Uh, you can also uh, subscribe to Patreon, which I still need to figure out if there's any settings. I don't think there is. But uh, Patreon, I believe now, can give you pricing based off your location. So, patreon.com slash Uh If you would like to just send us some cash to help us out, maybe uh, uh, I, I get a new ca a additional camera for myself just so that they can actually see me when we're recording these shows, um, uh, you can do that by going to paypal.me slash cubsoutloud. Uh, you can subscribe to us through Apple or rate us through Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us through Google Play Podcasts, and Spotify, and soon to be uh, Amazon and Audible. But I'm not sure when that's actually happening. But you can find mm. me anywhere on in the internet as Box Set, Box Pepper, Box Cup, Box Something or Other. You can also find me every Sundays on twitch.tv slash windgem, that's W Y N D G E M, uh, at uh, 11 p.m. Central or 11 a.m. Central Time for some Dungeons and Dragons uh, with the Bears and Dragons. Uh, shit went down today. I will, I will say that in that episode. You can also find that here on YouTube. Um, and that's me, Gary, uh, Damon. Where can people find you? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on the internet as um, theatercup 79 Basically, most bear-related sites are Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. Um, definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. That's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. And with that, uh, say goodnight, everybody! Goodnight, everybody! Have a good one, y'all.